Welcome back to Ring Crap presented by Forever Blue Shirts. I am Jim Cerny and that happy face across from me there is Molly <laughs> Walker of the New York Post. Molly, thanks for coming in from the heat outside and spend a few minutes with oh, us today. Please, I was going to say, I hope you don't hear my air conditioner blasting to my right, but it is in fact. So it's <laughs> and, melting and it needs temperatures to be. here. So what does a Rangers beat reporter do when there's really not a lot to report and you've got a couple months before training camp? What's on tap for yeah. Molly this summer? Yeah, you know, it was it was definitely an interesting offseason for the Rangers, just in terms of the fact that I think everybody was expecting a lot more, a lot more movement. And it kind of looked like it was going to be that way for a second, especially when they waved Barkley Goodrow. Um, and then it just kind of stalled a little bit. So it's it definitely hasn't been as eventful as as we all thought it was going to be. Um, but I think that that still, you know, creates opportunity for content and, you know, different angles for stories and things like that. Then you start to look inward in the organization, you know, internally, um, the options that they have there. So lots of different stuff like that. And then once it usually dies down, I'll go and help out cover some Yankee games, Mets games, <laughs> and, uh, maybe even some Giants, Jets, OTAs, mini camp. Um, and then I do the U.S. Open every year, which is my favorite event to do. So that's going to be fun uh, at the end of August. So you didn't put in to go out to Alberta to see Matt Rempe <laughs> and George LaRock throw down. And you didn't get the invite to the Adam Fox wedding of the century <laughs> this past weekend. No, I don't. I think that's all a little bit of a conflict of interest. I don't think I'd be able to do that. Uh, but really cool to see Matt Rempe, um, yeah. you know, work. And I thought it was the second, you know, sort of content that we've seen from him. There was another video of him teaching an Alberta boxing club um, <laughs> yeah. how to fight on the ice. So it's kind of funny, you know, going from being someone that, you know, was getting taught how to fight to, you know, then teaching others how to fight. So um, he looks like he's having um, a great off season. And that's honestly, I mean, I know that the Rangers are so, so impressed with his work ethic and his drive and his desire to be a better, better player. And, and I know that they gave him a very, very aggressive off season regimen for him to follow. So I, I was kind of hoping that they were going to ask him to stay in New York. Because yeah. um, I just felt like that would have been uh, really beneficial for him, or at least part of the summer, because obviously all players should get time to go home and, and see their families and have some downtime. Um, but I, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, that was ever something that they thought about, because um, I'm sure he would have really loved that and, and benefited a lot from it. But I'm sure his, his regiment uh, in Calgary is good too. All right. So I'm going to zip back to something you said before, because we were talking about you know, how you yeah. cover things as a reporter <laughs> and, and what have you. So we're all expecting, you know, we're all on the Jacob Truba watch. And we're like, yeah. well, if, if if that shoe drops, well, then that opens up the money and then they can shoot for, you know, top line right wing. And, right. and the Truba thing collapses and Riley Smith is brought in uh, on a discounted contract, you know, the mm -hmm. trade with the Penguins. All that said, and Sam Carrick gets signed. All that said, for us as reporters, not so great, not so sexy, <laughs> right? <laughs> But we are talking about a team that is running it back largely, by and large, with a team that won the President's Trophy and was two wins from the Stanley Cup final. And I think that is completely being lost here in what they've 100%. done and not been able to do, right? They're, they're still a good team. And ostensibly, you get Philip Edel for a full season. Again, knock wood. We don't know. but I know. Wood, right? <laughs> with him. Several and times. Couple, right? <laughs> And Capo Caco, you know, you hope for better health and better production out of him. Ostensibly, you take those components. This is a better team than the team that won the President's Trophy last year. But it's completely being lost. And you're already agreeing with that point. I don't know if I 100% agree. Listen, <laughs> of course, you know, like you said, Filipino getting a full season on, under his belt. Capo Caco, same thing, having just a better year. You know, maybe if that injury doesn't happen, it helps a little bit. Um, of course, those are all things that would make the Rangers better, but they are obviously things that are up in the air, especially with Philip Hedl and his track record of his health. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is tough to fully buy into that, knowing that about Philip Hedl. Um, But of course, the Rangers would 100% benefit for, from a full season from Philip Hedl. And if he's able to have an absolute breakout year like Alexi Lefkowitz, I mean, he's he had, you know, kind of a year, but, you know, if, if, what would have happened if he was able to stay in that second line center role all last season? Who knows? Um, so I definitely think that those are aspects 
that should be considered, but almost a little apprehensively, just because it's not guaranteed. I understood why they had to get rid of Barkley Goodrow, especially when they were going towards this offseason plan of retooling. And, and, you know, I think that Steven Stamkos was on their radar. You know, they needed money in order to be able to do that thing. Losing Barkley Goodrow, one of the most proven playoff performers. And I know that he had a tough year, down year. His production was nowhere near what a $3.6 million player should be at. Um, and I totally agree with that. But then you look at the playoffs and he was one of the top five reasons why they got to where they did. Um, and I even think that when the production isn't happening, he's a president presence in the room and he's just kind of a dirty work kind of player that you need that. You, I really think that he brings so much value. So you subtract that. And I think that that kind of makes the look of the team a little bit different and it's 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 an argument to be made. There's an argument to be made whether or not they're better right now or not, especially when you take into consideration how the locker room might be feeling after what happened with Barkley Goodrow and Jacob Truba. Right. I think that one of their greatest assets as a team is their mindset and their camaraderie and their playing for one another. Um, so I don't I think the fact that if if Truba does come back into a locker room, I think that might it would help but i obviously i don't think that the players were were that thrilled with how everything went down i mean who would be it is a business but you know they're still allowed to feel the way that they feel um so i'm wondering if if truba does end up getting traded you know losing both barkley and truba in those formats i'm wondering how that would affect the room if it does end up coming to fruition um so that would be something interesting to be seen but there's an argument to be made i think i don't know if i would go as far to say that they are better than they were last year no now see i was just saying <laughs> that you could make the argument i'm definitely yep. not saying yes. it the arguments can be made yes <laughs> so but that leads to again it, it it all revolves around what they would have done this off season is find that top six, top line, right wing, mm -hmm. right? And then there was, I, I don't know if glut's the right word, that there was a glut of them, but there certainly were some high profile guys out there. There were definitely high profile options out there. So here's the million dollar, it's more than a million dollar question, but we'll, we'll cap it at a million, right? In a salary cap world. Mm -hmm. Why can't Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider, five on five, Fit with really anybody outside Pavel Buchnevich and a nice little run with Frank Vitrano. Why does nobody Listen. fit with two of the, these two guys on that line? I've talked to players who have played in that role off the record. You know, just it's not easy to play with two guys who have played together for as long as Chris Kreider and Mika Zibanejad have. They have like their own secret language almost with the way that they play off of each other and being the third person coming into that can sometimes be really difficult and it has proven to be difficult for a lot of players that have an absolute revolving door of players yeah. that have been there so i have asked that question before just genuinely curious and the answer is yeah of course it's tough like these guys have you know their own language their own you know cues they know each other's tendencies like their own so coming in and trying to foster that trying to add to that or you know support it even is proving to be a real difficult challenge um you know do i think that if they got steven samkos and he went there uh, on that right wing i would love to have seen that that would have been sick um that would have been that could have been really great. But again, I mean, maybe it, who knows if it would have actually worked out. I definitely think that something to consider is obviously breaking them up, but right. it, that's the bones of their lineup. And that's one of the most prominent bones, I would go as far to say. So it's tough. It's a tough job. It's, it's just, it, 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 it doesn't, it never always falls on the new right winger. It obviously falls on Mika and, and Chris too as well. Um, but I think it just takes, it's, it will take the right kind of player or they're just going to have to scrap it at some point and try to come up with a different variation of the top six, which is so hard to do now that we've had 
what was an unbelievable year of Alexi right. Lafreniere, Artemi Panarin, and Vincent Trocek. That line should and probably will be 100% in, intact come training camp. Just hearing how much Peter Laviolette loved it and how, you know, he always mentioned how he never has touched that. I'm curious to see if he thinks about it um, just because of that first line. Um, but it's it's a very interesting situation and one that the Rangers have been dealing with for far too long. <laughs> uh, yeah, far, far too long is right. And, you know, internally, externally, shoot first guys, passing guys, uh, you know, guys that go in and, and muck, yep. young guys, older guys, you know, and now. <laughs> doesn't matter. You know, right, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't work. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've had a bunch of people come back to me and say, hey, you know, Kako's healthy this year. He, he he deserves that first whack at it. I'm like, we've been down this road three times. He got it. Three yeah, three he did get before. it. And it yeah. was terrible. He, terrible. He did, he did get it. And if he connects with anybody, it's probably Philip Heedle. So yeah. those two on the third line is probably a good starting point. But so yes. that brings it back to Riley Smith, mm -hmm. Brennan, Brennan, Brennan Othman. You're going to put the 21 year old up there with them. That's <sighs> I don't that's a yeah, I don't, ask, right? It is. And I don't, you know, obviously a lot of it will be dependent on training camp because I do believe that lines can be changed and, you know, decisions sure. obviously are made in, in training camp based on what the hierarchy is seeing on the ice. So Brendan often often comes in and has an absolute unbelievable camp, lights it up in the preseason games, whatever it may be. Sure. You know, that could be an option. Um, but I don't see if that doesn't happen. I don't know if they want to hand the keys to that car over to a 21 year old, like you said, um, you know, he, I think he had three games last year. They were okay. You know, they were kind of, you know, not memorable. They were, they were fine. Um, but obviously fine doesn't cut it in the NHL. And I think that, I mean, it was pretty quick work. You know, Peter Lovey like got a look at him and then, and then that was it. So right. it kind of got the impression that um, there was no impression made. Um, so it will be on Brendan Offen uh, to do that. But I mean, obviously it would be huge for the Rangers if he were able to you know, come to fruition at, at the right time. And he's been playing right wing too. So Correct. that's, that's the important, that's the, uh, that's the real important thing there because obviously they are thin on the right side, especially if Capo ends up getting traded before the season starts. So, but that's the thing, like if you trade Capo Caco, you need to replace him. Right. Right. Are you banking on Brennan Othman replacing that? And and Brennan Othman is a way different player than Capo Caco. You know, Capo Caco is a is a serviceable third liner who, you know, great with puck possession, you know, good along the walls, gets to the net occasionally. And Brennan Othman's a skill guy, you know, so you're adding another skill guy to the lineup. I don't know if it's a hundred percent what they need at this right. moment in time. <laughs> right. So so we talked about the, the million dollar question, right? And but now there's an e even bigger one because even with them trying to dick ticker around and you know come up with you know the right right wing or whatever, and they go through a plethora of guys last season, said I I, I won't even go into how they thought Jack Roslevic was gonna be the answer. <laughs> won't even touch that one, okay? <laughs> but but even with all that, they still win 55 games, have 114 points. And, you know, Kreider has 39 goals. And, you know, I know there's a lot of special teams in there, but they still have a lot of tremendous team success. So to mm -hmm. me, then you go to, to the next million dollar question. This, this might be the $10 million question. Can Artemi Panarin, Mika Zibanejad, especially those two, Kreider had, an I thought, an awful series against Florida. Um, but... That was the surprise because Kreider usually is a playoff guy. Zabanajad mm -hmm. and Panarin, I wasn't shocked that they disappeared against Florida. Like you thought yeah. that this was the year. No, no, not this year. But when they did disappear and when Panarin would skate over the blue line and immediately go to the outside, never think about going to the middle. You're like, oh, yeah, that, that's what he does th this time of right. year, you know? So. The ten million dollar question is your two best players, right? You know, not including Igor and Adam Fox. Your two best players have proven now multiple years in the postseason that this is what you're going to get. 
So how do you work around that? Because they're not going any, obviously we know they're not going. For sure. Yeah, no, I know. It's definitely, you know, something that I'm sure the hierarchy is considering, you know, it's not, not on their radar. You know, they are, I mean, clearly just by the way they set out in the off season, they knew that they had to tinker, that they had to retool, that they wanted to reshape a little bit, you know, plug and chug different guys that if they could, um, I think that we're, if we're talking specifically about this playoffs, I mean, look, they lost to the Stanley Cup champions. And I do think that a lot of credit should be given to the Panthers for the fact that Mika Zibanejad and Artemi Panarin never had the puck. Those right. two guys need to have the puck. But it was a conscious strategy by the Panthers for sure. to uphold that. So I do think that, you know, I feel like I'm, you know, I feel like I, I feel like some of the players sometimes when they say these things, like there's another team on the other side of the ice, of course, For sure. that always needs to be taken into consideration, but you're not wrong in the sense that this is multiple playoffs now where the two top guys have not risen to the challenge. So I definitely think it's something on their radar and that if, you know, depending on how the next few season goes, few seasons go, it's on their mind. And, you know, things, things could happen. You know, I know, I know they both have pretty immovable contracts, but, um, you know, it's, it's a commitment. Um, and it's kind of just something that you have to, you know, think about your commitment to it and, and seeing how it goes out, you know, like, but it's not, not on their radar, you know, and it's not, not a massive problem for the Rangers. (laughs) Um, but you know, I don't know. It's it's difficult to say because they are immovable, yeah. essentially. Um, well, that, and that, that, they that's are why, a big part of the regular season. Right. And and listen, they, I think, went into... This is why they were looking to move Troop. It was to bring in another big piece yes. that maybe could be a, a, a guy that does get it done in the postseason. Right. And maybe, like a Sam Coase. Right, and bring these guys along with him. I think that was the ultimate goal. Again, yeah, you know, we can't jump inside Chris's head, but that I think was the ultimate goal. That they're here, so definitely. How are how are you gonna right make them better in those situations? You know, it's it's a will and skill thing, right? How many yeah. times have you heard that in the locker room? Mm-hmm. It's not yeah. just the skill; it's the will. So. No. You know, 100%. you need to build that up around them and then, you know, hopefully bring them along with it, you know, kind of the rising tide theory. Right. I think that, you know, you look at all the past Stanley Cup champions and the yeah. routes that they've taken to get to the top of the mountain, as Barry Trotz always likes to say <laughs> that I yeah. and I copy him all the time. Um, and, you know, the best, you know. The Rangers, the best that outlook that they could have is that this is a part of their journey. The best thing that Mika Zibanejad and, and Artemi Panarin can do is take these experiences going forward and, and applying it in the future so that they can eventually get over that hump. That's right. all you can really hope for, you know, because of the way that the team is structured and the contracts that these guys are on. The commitment has been made. Um but I mean, I always, and I know people hate when I say this, especially my mother, um, <laughs> but, you know, the Rangers don't get to the playoffs without Artemi Panarin. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> like, of course. That, that matters. I know that, you know, the playoffs are what matters, 100%. And I'm not diminishing at all the fact that Artemi has not done what he's needed to do to help the Rangers win the Stanley Cup for multiple playoffs now but that doesn't diminish how important he is in the regular season. There are still 82 games before game one of round one and setting yourself up for the best possible success in the playoffs comes in the regular season. And our temp, there is no disputing our Timmy's importance to the Rangers at that time of year. So I always feel obligated to mention that because I feel like it's oftentimes overlooked, Um, but it's an issue. It's it's an issue. It's been it's been an issue, and it's you know something that's going to need to be rectified in order for the Rangers to take that next step. A couple more quick ones for you, Molly Walker, the New York Post is our guest. 
Um, everything that went on this postseason, including trying to trade Truba, you know, whatever, didn't didn't work out, or at least not yet, but really is colored by the fact that next offseason it hits the fan when it comes to the yeah. salary cap. Mm-hmm. And what are you hearing about Igor and his camp? You know, we, we hear a lot about how he wants <laughs> a certain percentage of next year's cap and, you know, $13 million a year to start, you know, the conversation. Um, and then, of course, you got Lafreniere and Miller in there as well, too, if you want to touch on that. And then just quickly, just a, a 1B to this. I'm not trying to make yeah. it such a long question, but you can <laughs> maybe put a neat bow around this is, yeah, I don't think the Ryan Lindgren contract is going to be so easy this this mm. summer. And I know there's the arbitration deadline. Yeah. Rangers do not and will not go to arbitration because then they just walk them into unrestricted free agency. Right. But I guess one B of this is, do you agree with me that that's you know that the term on that contract is is a sticking point for the two sides? Um, so. I guess it's a lot of contract questions. I'll just let you kind of throw a bow around it yeah. and take it whichever direction you like. Yeah, I mean, I guess to start with Igor, um, I know that the camp, yes, the 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 14% of the cap, you know, that number has been thrown around, but I've heard that for them, their starting point is 12 million. So obviously in these negotiations, players start as high as they possibly can. My understanding is, you know, 12 million is where they're coming in at to start. I feel like the floor is carry prices 10.5. And look, I think that obviously Igor has every right to go for as much money as he possibly can. Every player does. Um, But I'm sure that a sticking point in negotiations will be if you're expecting 14% of the cap. I mean, and I crunched the math too when Henrik Lundqvist was on his uh, largest contract, he Late accounted comparison. for, I think, yeah, 12%, 13%. But you know what? Henrik Lundqvist never won a Stanley Cup. Right. So I think that their experience with Lundqvist, and 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 I don't think Igor Shosturkin is Henrik Lundqvist either. I think that's the other point that if I'm the Rangers, I'm making as well. Um, he's obviously been their best player in the playoffs. But, you know, he's had his ups and downs in the season, too. You know, he is not, you know, he's one of the best goalies in the league, no doubt. But he's not, you know, I don't think he's at Henrik Lundqvist level. Um, so I can I can see him starting high, going as for, for as much as he can. But if he wants to win a Stanley Cup in New York, then, you know, he's got to be reasonable. Um, so 10.5, 12. I imagine, I know it's a pretty large range, but I imagine somewhere in the middle. <laughs> is where they will end. Um, as for Lingren, it's, it is sticky because of what's ahead and because jury needs to account for that. Um, but the other thing that jury needs to account for is that Ryan Lingren is Adam Fox's left-hand man, groomsman in his wedding. That's your Norris Trophy winning defenseman. You know, like yeah. you want to provide him with the utmost, they've been together since they've been teenagers. They have a very good thing going between the two of them. So it is still a priority that needs to be treated as such. And I do think that the Rangers see it that way. Um, but I do think that, yes, term term is the issue right now. Um, so it, it will be it will be tricky for jury, but I, I do think that I think I think Ryan has said he wants to be in New York. He, you know, I'm sure he wants to stay with Adam Fox. Like, you know, he's got a great gig on the left side of a <laughs> winning defenseman. You know, I, I who who would want anything other than that? So, um, you know, I can see that being something that they can come, you know, to an agreement and an arbitrator, you know, if it gets there or whatnot. So we'll see. Well, <laughs> yeah, they, they don't want the arbitrator because that, yeah. you know, then he gets Better the one-year deal. Yeah. He gets right. the one-year deal, and he get he walks right into. But you know what? Status. Maybe, but maybe, maybe that's all that they can. Maybe that's all they can afford yeah. right now. Maybe that is. I honestly think that might be the easiest path. You know, deal with it next season when you have a better idea of the other contracts that you're going to be handing out. You know, and present it as such. So I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, you know, if that's and and you know, then if it doesn't work out, then. Then Lindgren becomes a UFA, you know, like it's, 
that those things happen all the time. And then, you know, you, whether they have people in the pipeline, which I, they're very thin on D right now. Very I mean, the thin. fact that they, the fact that they qualified Matthew Robertson is all you need to know about how thin they are. To, they don't have a choice. <laughs> they, they don't have a choice. The kid hasn't even sniffed an NHL opportunity, but they don't have a choice because they, I mean, it, when Ben Harper went down for the year, Oh, it just, it made them Absolutely. so, so, so thin on D. So, I mean, he still got another year, I'm pretty sure. So he'll, yeah. he should be back and should, you know, maybe be in the mix, um, depending on what happens, what doesn't happen. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. It's, it, you know, they, they obviously still have Zach Jones, but, you know, I, I'm, I mean, what is this year four that Zach Jones is going for the third pair role? Like, He's he's kind of been there. I mean, it's it's a you know good spot for him, and I understand that people. I mean, hey, I share the UMass the UMass <laughs> blood with 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 Mr. Zach Jones. Like, of course, I want to see as many UMass players out there as humanly possible. No, I'm kidding. Um, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not so convinced on how convinced the Rangers are that he is the answer long term to their back end um i think he's you know another skill guy another puck moving guy his specialty is quarterbacking the second power play again there's just not a lot of upward mobility for him right now especially because he's similar to an adam fox to a keandre miller you know so it's it'll be really interesting to see where where the rangers shake out you know defensively over the next couple of years because they are like moves they're going to need to be made i i know they're drafting some guys now so i think that yeah maybe maybe it'll be a better situation in the long run or you know maybe they'll bring in another guy like augustusson on another one year deal you know but that's the thing if i'm zach jones i'm getting pissed that i keep well, signing absolutely. someone to leapfrog him every year but you know that's the thing which, you got to come which in they, you got to win the spot right. But but they didn't do it this year. Like you, you know, you could you see, I'm just not throwing yet, a name out there. Well, not yet. There aren't a lot of guys <laughs> left. But you know, Nate there Schmidt. Are. Nate Schmidt signed the other day for under a million dollars. I'm like, hmm. I, I'm not hmm. saying, you know, yeah. we're talking a be all end all guy. But at the age of 32, veteran guy under a million dollars a year. That's you know? usually the type of guys that they go for. You know, right. that's usually that's usually that's what they've been doing. Patrick Nemeth. You know, we can go through the list. Right. Um, but you know what? <laughs> yeah. Some of them have really worked out. Well, right, right. I mean, hey, listen, I think, it's the kids. And Gustafson was good. And Gustafson was Gustafson was good value. He was a good value signing. Correct. Um, so I I you know, I, I just <laughs> I think he was probably the best that they've had over Correct. the last few years. Correct. Um so I'm very curious to see. It'll be very interesting. You know, Zach Jones is position is is very very interesting but um i do know that this past year he had a completely different attitude about his role a completely different perception of his job and you know what he was there for and i 100 percent know that that's why the opportunities that he got he was great he was yeah. more than solid Absolutely. he gave them every reason to want to see more from him um it's just you know it's it's do you want you, you want Eric Gustafson bigger, a little faster, more offensively inclined, or a smaller, less physical Zach Jones in a Florida series. Um, my mom right. is oh, my mom is advocating for Zach Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do you think I'm like, do you think Zach Jones is going to make that big of a difference though back there against the Florida Panthers? You know, that's that's the questions that those are the questions that are being asked. And and if you ask me, I, I don't necessarily think so. So, you know, those are all things to, to be taken into consideration. But, hey, Zach Jones, you know, the path right now, but it, it kind of has been for the last three years. Oh, for sure. This time of year, the path for the third pair role is right in front of him, completely unobstructed. Um, so whether or not there, an obstruction is, is parachuted in or not is yet to be seen. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see at training camp. I, I think that I want – Mama Walker on next week to get her <laughs> view of what's what's going on with this. I'm calling no, John. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I'm calling John Van Beesbrook now and telling him he's out next week, and Molly's mom is in. 
Honestly, she I'm, I'm sure she would say everything that every fan watching this is thinking right now. So maybe maybe it would be the better better choice than me. <laughs> I'm sure people haven't liked everything that I've had to say today. <laughs> but that, that's what it's about. I've I've been ticking off Ranger fans for more decades for than you have. Yeah, exactly. For years. <laughs> Molly, listen, really appreciate all your time today. I, I hope I didn't gobble up your, your entire no, summer day no. today, but it, it was a lot of fun. Look forward to doing it again, but certainly go enjoy your summer and you know we'll, we'll see how it shakes out. I, I think, and I'll leave you with this, I think the summer's going to be relatively quiet the rest of the way. It's the trade deadline next year mm -hmm. where I think the big moves, the next big moves are coming then for this team. And that's when it matters most. You know, did the Rangers, the question of whether or not the Rangers improved matters a lot more then than it does right now. So right. to be continued. <laughs> to be continued. And thanks so much for your time. Of course. Thanks for having me, Jim.